Got anything else? Okay, so parents and teachers are all... <laughs> We're going to be here for like five hours. <laughs> I'm talking yet. <laughs> so parents and teachers... Are... <laughs> parents and... Shut up. <laughs> you can tell them alone yes. all day. Yes. <laughs> and the cat. Yes. <laughs> you know, that's pretty much it. That's the schedule for today. Yes. First two, then the cat, then the cat. <laughs> So parents and teachers are always interested in learning about the book first before buying it. How would you describe Billy and the Goat? I would describe it as a buddy story, and I would describe it as a character who gets over his fear. Mm -hmm. When you're a kid, the world is obviously much bigger, you know? Yes. There's a lot of legs moving past you <laughs> and a lot of noise and yes. things like that. And it's it's a little daunting and intimidating. And, you know, as you grow, you you, know, you sort of embrace the world and understand it. And you get taller mm -hmm. and so your perspective changes and, and all of that. And it's really the heart of the story is about these two characters. The boy, you know, Billy, who mm -hmm. is very sort of uh, cautious and shy and a little bit of an introvert. And then there's Goat. Mm -hmm. And Goat is sort of like this kid's id. And <laughs> Goat just wants to go out and see the world. Oh. And he wants to, you know, get out yeah. and, and, and run around and experience things. And I thought it would be fun to put these two characters together. Yes. Where, you know, there's one character who's just like sort of content and being indoors and, you know, experiencing things at arm's length. But there's this other character who wants to sink his teeth into life and, you know, yeah. literally eat everything. And I think that may be one of the decisions to, you know, make that character a goat. You know, I'll give a little away where the goat um, is in this pen and he's so desperate to get out and see the fair and experience the fair and everything that it has to offer that he mm -hmm. chews the rope holding him in and oh, no. escape. And I love that yeah. idea. Like, that was, I think, the crux of the whole book. Once I, you know, because I was sort of circling around with the two characters trying to figure out what can I do with them, you know, they're kind of an odd couple mm -hmm. and, and all of that, one's shy and one's, you know, very bold and all of that, but you have to find, I think that was the key. Once I sort of had that image in my head of the, the, him in an animal pen mm -hmm. waiting to be judged, you know, at the goat competition at the fair, but he, he's so desperate to go experience life that he chews the rope yeah. and he eats the rope and... And he's gone. And so the boy has to chase him. You know, Billy has to chase him. And essentially the story is Billy more or less being dragged through the fair because he's chasing the goat trying to catch him. And he inadvertently experiences the whole fair, the very thing that he was, you know, sort of very nervous and, and apprehensive about. But this goat got him to come out of himself yes. and go experience the fair. And it was a lot more fun than he thought it would be, a lot less scary, and he ends up having a great time. Aww. And that's how I looked at those two characters. This kid is being forced to experience life and forced to get out there and engage because of this, this character, this, this element, this id <laughs> character that forces him to do that. And I, I, once I hit on that little image of the goat yeah. chewing the rope, I'm like, okay, now I get the whole thing downloaded into Everything my head. Everything came together. And, uh, <laughs> what came before it, and what came after it. Yeah. And that's the joy. You look for that lightning, yes. you know, like they hear run around in a storm with a lightning <laughs> rod, looking for that spark. And that's what we all do every day. You know, yeah. people are writing and illustrating books, you look for that kind of divine, <laughs> you know, and it, that's it. Yeah. Trying to get addicted to it. Mm -hmm. All right, so since you answered question number two, <laughs> that is fantastic that you did. So number three, if you could choose one character to be like your best friend in Billy and Goat, who would that be? It would be Goat. <laughs> it really would be Goat. Uh, because, you know, the funny thing is he's sort of me, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm both of those characters. Yes. There's a part of me that is cautious and apprehensive and doesn't really, you know, like, a, you know, there's points that everybody's yeah. flying, but they're kind of, you know, sort of in the background or wallflower or whatever. Yeah. And then there's other times when you're moving, you know, like you really mm -hmm. want to move forward, you want to go and engage in life yeah. and meet people and interact and all of that. But I do like Goat because I admire him mm -hmm. that he's like that all the time, <laughs> you know, and he's great. And I figure I can feed him anything. I wouldn't have to go buy him Goat Chow or anything <laughs> like that. I could just feed him an old sock mm -hmm. or a tin can or paper or whatever but I think he'd be a fun guy to have around he'd be a great yes pet. just have to have a lot of disposable there furniture. you go <laughs> okay so 
why do you think parents and teachers would enjoy reading this aloud? I think that it's, because I've read it aloud several times, I think mm -hmm. it's a fun read. I tried to structure the book where there's anticipation for the next page. I think good books, and this is the thing that I strive for with my books, I hope I achieve that once in a while, is that good books will spark conversation. And also, even with my own children, it was such a joy when we'd be out and about in the world and one of my children would point out something that they made a connection with a book. That's just like XYZ. And that's yeah. so gratifying. Mm -hmm. Not my book, but <laughs> some other <laughs> And But it's, it's just, that to me is one of the fights that they're to entertain, they're to enlighten, mm -hmm. they're to, um, you know, create conversation. They're, that's what one of the many, you know, just a few of the many things that books are for. Yes. And so my hope is that it will spark a librarian or a teacher or a parent mm -hmm. reading the book to get the, the, the children to relate yes. to the elements of the book, where there's some time you can remember that you were very shy mm -hmm. and then you were happy, you know, later that you actually took that really big step and, you know, with, maybe they're going to a birthday party and they sort of lean back with this, you know, chaos in front of them mm -hmm. and they're a little nervous and it's a little scary, but once they step in and get into it, you know, wasn't that gratifying? And wasn't yeah. that in the end something that you really enjoyed? Mm -hmm. Maybe that could be applied, you know, some other part of your life, first mm -hmm. day of school, first day of camp, meeting new people, whatever it is. So good books really sort of engage kids and it goes beyond the book. The book mm -hmm. is the sort of the spark or the jumping off point. Mm -hmm. And then for what you leave behind, the residue with both the parent or the adult and the child. Yes. You know, that's the important part of the book. The book is great, mm -hmm. but it's what's what you're left with. And that, I think about that all the time. Yeah. I think when I create my books, you know, what will be the leave behind? What will be yeah. the thing that some reader will take with them? Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important. It is. <laughs> and all your books have an important lesson to them. Um, I, I try. Some of them, <laughs> you know, are more successful than others. Mm -hmm. Um. One of my most favorite books is probably the quietest book I've ever created called Every Friday. Mm -hmm. And it's just, there's no story. It's just about a father and a son mm -hmm. who leave the house. And most of the book is them walking through their neighborhood to get to the diner and have breakfast together, oh. which is what they do every Friday. Mm -hmm. And this was something that I did with both of my children up until the end of elementary school. And that book has um, sort of sparked a lot of emails from people telling me that they've adopted oh, something wow. similar or the same yeah. thing, where the message of the book is carve out a little time just for the two of you as often as you can on a regular basis. It's so gratifying to hear from people mm -hmm. that they're doing the same thing. Just a little bit. It was an hour, once a week, with the two of us, and that was it. Aww. But it really meant yeah. something to me, and I, I hope it meant something to my son and my Aww. daughter. And so I try to put something in, in all of my books that has, you know, this sort of undercurrent or theme, mm -hmm. uh, or for lack of a better word, moral or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I always try to do that. I mean, it's fun to write and illustrate fun stories with, you know, sort of fun characters, but I feel very strongly that they need to have a purpose. Mm -hmm. They're merely, the con you know, sort of a way to convey something. It's great if they're fun to draw and fun to look at, and they, you know, the, the, the text itself is mm -hmm. fun to read and engaging, but really it's a delivery system for something deeper, hopefully. Yes. And I always, I strive for that. I, I know I don't always achieve it, but I really try hard to do that in, in mm -hmm. everything that I do. Yes. Okay, so what are some tips you would give parents when they're shopping for books? Tips for parents? Well, bring your, bring your child, bring <laughs> your reader, and it's also a great way to start conversation. Mm -hmm. So if you were to go to a, a children's section of a bookstore or a children's bookstore, you know, sit down with them, go through books, and know that if they like a book, it's probably a pretty good indicator 
that they're going to want to read it again. Unlike adults, where we read a book, and like if we sat in the store and read this book, most of the time, like, eh, I'm good. <laughs> I read it again. Yeah. Uh, but children tend to really want to absorb it and examine it and ingest it, and that requires that you read it over and over. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that you're only buying, for, you know, that your child thinks that they would like, or even if you sit down and read it, that, that they do, you know, enjoy while you're sitting on the floor in the bookstore. But you try to push them a little bit or, 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 or show them something different because mm. you are the parent. You have way more experience than they do. You know your child. So you can probably push or stretch beyond what they like. Just don't give them every single thing that within these sort of narrow parameters of what mm. they like. But your job as an adult is to sort of start exposing them to the wider world. And so maybe there's something that either subject matter or even a level of reading and mm. comprehension that may be a little bit of, not too much, but a little bit of a stretch for them, that's your job to expose them to that, encourage that. And even when my children were very young, and I would say when my son was probably about seven and my daughter was four and a half, five years old, we would read, I mean, I read to them every night. Mm -hmm. And even at that very early age, I was reading books by I, Beverly Cleary. Oh, wow, yeah. And even though it was a little mm -hmm. bit above, you know, the, the, their comprehension, or I thought it was above <laughs> their comprehension, they totally got it. Oh. If you want to make your kids cry, <laughs> read Ribsy. Oh, no. When you cry, <laughs> my kids. For weeping, oh. and they'll go to bed crying because the poor Ribsy yeah. was lost. They were just the, the most tragic thing they ever. Oh. Heard. And I, my limit was like three chapters. And I'm like, Come on, guys! I have to have to go to bed now. You have school tomorrow. No, oh. oh, Ribsy was going to bed. And I have to tell you, it was I took a chance because they were kind of young, and those books are for you know yeah. I would say seventy nine year old mm -hmm. kids. Um, but they totally got it. I felt like they, were, they got the high points. I mean, my oh. daughter, who was younger, I think she she pretty much comprehended everything. My son, who was like seven at the time, completely got mm. it. Um, but I took a shot, and I read Roald Dahl to them, and wow. Eleanor Estes, and you know things like that mm. as we kept moving ahead as they got older. But I always tried to just do a little smidge above what the books that were meant for yeah. them. And they went right along with it. They're great wow. readers. Uh, I'm not going to start bragging about my children <laughs> not in parents' school. But I think that it really benefited them. Um, and I did read the picture books, mm -hmm. certainly. Yeah. Not mine. But <laughs> I did read the picture books. I read the My Favorites. We'd go to the store. You know, I have a lot of friends that write and illustrate books. So, you know, I often, you know, we exchange books with each mm -hmm. other when we go hang out. You know, I brought this book for you. and oh. you know, we did so. I'd come home with you know stacks of books after you know meeting up with some people or going to my publisher's office. You know, I'd come home with a big wonderful <laughs> stack of books, and so it was they had a lot of literature in their lives, oh. especially early on when mm -hmm. it was just this regular thing, and they anticipated it. Yes. And that's something like every Friday where it's it's sort of well, it was two on one, but it was scheduled, it was predictable, it was comforting that. Half hour before you go to bed, you know, you'll get a book read to you or several books read to you. And after a while, they were anticipating, they were sort of leaning forward and anticipating Aww. that. And I think that they're good readers now. Mm -hmm. And I think that because they're good readers, they're pretty good writers as yes. well. Oh, I would love to see some of their work. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> so, the, maybe they'll so, be like, oh, I'm inspired by daddy. Like, nobody's following in my footsteps. <laughs> nobody's following in dad's footsteps. <laughs> Okay. All right, so it was great talking to you. Thank you for your time. And, you know, I'm going to be sure to read your book and share it with everybody. And you Thanks. know what? Kids will love it because it has a great lesson to it. Thank you.